Would you be scared if I told you that your pet could get eaten by a plant? Like the cobra lily or the butterwort, which lures unsuspecting insects with fake promises. Watch until the end as we explore the 20 deadliest plants that eat animals. Number 20. Water wheel plant. Consider the water wheel plant as the aquatic counterpart of the Venus flytrap. It lacks roots but gracefully floats on the surfaces of lakes and other water bodies. This enigmatic plant allures bugs with its diminutive traps, numbering between five and nine on each symmetrical whirl extending down the length of this plant. Given the parallels in their physiology and eating habits, the traps of the water wheel plant can snap shut in one hundredth of a second. Interestingly, it shares a common ancestor with the Venus flytrap. Thriving during the Cenozoic era, this carnivorous plant feeds on various marine animals but exhibits a preference for mosquito larvae. Studies indicate that they face severe endangerment in the forests of their native Africa. Maintaining a robust population of water Daphnia mosquito larvae is crucial, as they require a continuous supply of nutrients. Additionally, this plant thrives when exposed to sufficient sunlight. Growers must shield them from algae to prevent overshadowing. This can be achieved by periodically adding oak leaves and pine needles to the water. The water wheel plant boasts an intriguing mechanism, growing exceptionally fast and achieving a growth rate of 4 to 9 millimeters in a single day. Number 19. Burkinia reducta. Even though Burkinia reducta is pronounced like broccoli, it's nothing like it. Broccolis are harmless, but this one is not. This plant can be off-putting for people who don't care for carnivorous plants. The truth is, the plant is actually a type of bromeliad, the same family of plants that includes Spanish mosses, pineapples, and various thick-leaf succulents. They are native to southern Venezuela, Colombia, Brazil, and Guyana. B. reducta is equipped with long, slender pitchers that reflect ultraviolet light. Like most plants on this list, they also emit a sweet and irresistible scent. Of course, the average bug is drawn to it and wants more of it. For a long time, botanists were unsure if this plant was a true carnivore until a discovery in 2005. They found it has digestive enzymes in its copious bell, and its leaves are covered in trichomes capable of absorbing nutrients. Other features that qualify B. reducta as a carnivore are its waxy surface, water collection, and odor emission, suggesting a passive pitfall trap. The plant is sold commercially, and you can own one at home. However, there's a striking difference between the ones grown naturally and those grown commercially. Number 18. Helium Fora. This exotic pitcher is the most elegant among all pitcher plants. It's also called the Sun Pitchers. It's a carnivorous plant that catches insects with its unique pitchers. Mainly found in Brazil and Venezuela, this plant catches insects to compensate for the nutrient-poor soil it grows on. The tiny bud on the top contains nectar glands, which it uses to lure insects. Once the insect reaches the rim, they lose grip and fall into the digestive liquid. The cups are smooth, and because moisture remains in the cup, the insect cannot escape. This plant is super easy to grow, but growers need to be aware of how it works. It feeds on a wide range of insects, including mealworms and fruit flies. Sun pitchers are weak feeders, meaning that they do not catch these insects themselves. If you're growing them, you need to feed them one or two tiny insects once every two to three weeks, and make sure to check if the trap is empty before dropping in another insect. Helium faras thrive in stable conditions, and can adapt to lower humidity if the temperatures remain constant throughout the day. However, this magical plant can survive in sunny drafts, where temperatures range between 16 and 25 degrees Celsius. Number 17. Rainbow Plants this plant is referred to as a beautiful killer because, despite its attractiveness, it possesses a ruthless nature. Rainbow plants derive their name from their glittery and multicolored leaves. Under sunlight, these leaves gleam brightly, and their sparkling appearance is attributed to a sticky mucolaginous substance, akin to those found in flypaper traps and sundew. The species features tapered leaves adorned with a dense layer of glandular hairs that secrete glue-like substances, attracting small insects. In contrast to sundew, these plants lack the ability to move their leaves for trapping assistance. Instead, they depend on the adhesive properties of the mucilaginous. When mosquitoes and gnats land on the mucilaginous surface, they do not stand a chance and expect to find a tasty snack. Unfortunately, this doesn't occur. Instead, they become ensnared. 
As they struggle, they encounter more glue, ultimately succumbing to suffocation or exhaustion. At this juncture, the plant's second set of digestive glands come into action. These sensitive glands lie flat against the leaf's surface, and similar to most carnivorous plants, their digestive enzymes dissolve the soft tissues of the trapped insect. Rainbow plants are predominantly found in North and Southwestern Australia. Number 16. Moccasin Plant Originally discovered in Southwest Australia, the moccasin plant continues to stand out as one of the largest carnivorous plants in the country. It ticks all the boxes for a carnivorous plant, luring insects with its sweet scent and guiding them into its moccasin-shaped pitchers, where the unfortunate bug undergoes slow digestion. Adding to the confusion for its prey, the translucent cells on the lids of these pitchers lead insects to knock themselves while attempting to escape. This plant's uniqueness lies in its closer relation to flowering plants like oak and apple trees, rather than other carnivorous pitcher plants. Here, the moccasin plant exemplifies convergent evolution, as previously discussed. While the moccasin plant thrives in Australia, cultivating it proves challenging due to prolonged heat or wet conditions. However, planting them in a well-draining mix of perlite and peat can ensure their survival. To improve their chances of thriving, it is recommended to keep them on a tray and let them dry out between waterings. Number 15. Portuguese Sundew If a bug were to compose a horror novel, the antagonist would undoubtedly be a sundew. Diverging from its counterparts, the Portuguese sundew possesses a unique ability to consume substantial quantities of insects through its highly efficient trapping method. Flourishing in nutrient-poor soil along the coasts of Portugal, Spain, and Morocco, this plant stands out. This environmental condition renders it more ruthless towards insects, although forgiveness may be granted considering their efforts to supplement their diet and overcome malnutrition. Similar to many other carnivorous creatures mentioned in this category, the Portuguese sundew entices bugs with its sweet aroma. Should you be a bug, the temptation would be irresistible. As these bugs draw near, they find themselves ensnared in a sticky substance known as melange on the leaves. Subsequently, the plant secretes digestive enzymes, gradually breaking down the unfortunate insect and assimilating its nutrients, allowing it to thrive and bloom anew. To thrive during its initial year, the Portuguese Sundo release on abundant rainfall to maintain damp soil throughout the summer months. Subsequent years may experience drier conditions, resuming light watering by mid-autumn. The rains serve to rejuvenate new growth, and optimal light levels remain essential for the overall health of this plant, contributing to the development of robust and vibrant leaves. Number 14. T. Peltatum. The following carnivorous plant stands as the largest among all confirmed carnivorous plants globally. Its life encompasses more stages than Ridley Scott's Xenomorph, and the intriguing aspect is that each of these cycles unfolds with a unique twist. During the initial stage, it adopts the form of a rosette composed of simple lancelet leaves with wavy margins. Subsequently, it transforms into elongated glandular leaves that bear a resemblance to plants designed to trap insects. At this juncture, the plant actively attracts, captures, and digests insects. Each rosette typically consists of one to three of these specialized leaves. As it progresses, the plant assumes the appearance of an adult liana featuring a short non-carnivorous leaf positioned at the summit of its long intertwined stems. These leaves boast measurements of 5 meters in length and 4 inches in thickness. While this may sound unsettling, there's no cause for concern. The telt totem, the plant in question, is exclusive to West Africa, primarily found in greenhouses specializing in exotic plants. Surprisingly, scientists were unaware of this plant's carnivorous nature until 1979 a staggering 51 years after its initial discovery. The seeds of this species have a diameter of about 3 inches, displaying a vivid red, disc-shaped appearance with a peltate stalk emerging from the fruit. The majority of the seed's development takes place outside the fruit, and as these seeds desiccate, their broad umbrella shape facilitates wind-driven transportation. Number 14. Albany Pitcher Plant were you aware that the Albany pitcher plant shares a closer kinship with roses, cabbages, and pumpkins? If indeed, what led to its inclusion in this category? Evidently, the Albany pitcher plant is a distinctive variety discovered in Western Australia, also known as the Western Australian pitcher plant. The Albany pitcher plant distinguishes itself from other carnivorous plants for several reasons, 
It represents the sole species in the genus Cephus and is thought to exemplify convergent evolution. This implies that it acquired similar traits to other organisms without actual genetic relation. This plant's resemblance to cabbages is noteworthy, yet it differs significantly from them. Similar to cabbages, it features a tubular leaf or pitcher with a lid designed to repel rain. Insects are enticed inside by the red and white coloring, but the sharp, teeth-like spikes around the rim hinder their escape. They ultimately descend to the pitcher's base, where they undergo digestion in a pool of enzymes. In most instances, ants are ensnared inside as well. The Albany pitcher plant faces endangerment due to its limited distribution. Nevertheless, there is no immediate threat as certain parts of its distribution areas enjoy protected status. Number 13. Trigger Plant As their name suggests, these plants exhibit a reaction when triggered, and they are named after their distinctive pollination method. Upon an insect's investigation of a trigger plant flower, it encounters a club-shaped column that rapidly springs up from beneath the petals. Despite their intimidating name, these plants may not be as perilous as commonly thought. It remains unclear whether this plant is genuinely carnivorous or if it employs this mechanism primarily for protection against bothersome insects. Undoubtedly, insects simply do not leave these plants undisturbed. Certain species of trigger plants feature trichomes or sticky hairs designed to capture small bugs unrelated to the pollination process. Subsequently, the leaves of these plants secrete digestive enzymes, slowly dissolving their unfortunate victims. Scientists remain uncertain about whether trigger plants derive nutritional benefits from their prey, or if their primary purpose is eliminating unwanted visitors. Trigger plants offer a captivating spectacle. Humans can induce the same reaction as insects. A simple tickle inside the plant can trigger an explosive response, and once activated, the column remains upright for at least one hour before snapping back. Nearly 70% of trigger plant species thrive in Southwest Australia. Number 12. Nepenthes raja. What would you anticipate from one of the largest carnivorous plants on the planet? Naturally, a substantial amount of food. The Nepenthes raja belongs to the carnivorous pitcher plant group commonly referred to as monkey cups because primates drink from their leaves when thirsty. They show no concern. This plant is situated in Borneo and commands the area. Surprisingly, it grows to an impressive height of 6 meters and can contain up to 3 liters of water. But that's not all. It also harbors 2.5 liters of digestive juices, a considerable amount for a plant. Its colossal size means that its diet is not limited to invertebrates, like lizards, frogs, and birds. Even rats can be enticed inside. Once they enter, they swiftly dissolve in acid. Additionally, this plant maintains a symbiotic relationship with the local mountain shrew. The shrew consumes the plant's nectar and subsequently deposits waste into the pitcher, providing the plant with the much-needed nitrogen. Number 11. Roridula. Similar to the Gorgon's gaze, the Roridula possesses a distinctive approach but first and foremost, its beauty commands admiration. Displaying a lovely pink flower and adhesive leaves that capture attention, this plant establishes a peculiar relationship with the assassin bug. This partnership piques the curiosity of many carnivorous plant enthusiasts. Originating from South Africa, the Roridula stands as a carnivorous plant with a unique twist. It doesn't solely digest the insects ensnared by its sticky hairs. Instead, it delegates that task to a bug species known as Pizza Ruli, fostering a symbiotic relationship. Now, you might be wondering about the benefits for the plant. Well, the bug excretes waste rich in nutrients. The Roradula then absorbs these nutrients for its growth and development. Notably, scientists have uncovered a 40 million year old Roradula fossil in the Baltic region of Europe, indicating a broader distribution during the Kazakh era than its present range suggests. Cultivators worldwide appreciate having this plant in their collections. Utilized as a potted plant, the Roridula can be showcased in a sunny spot on a window or a well-ventilated balcony. If you desire to witness this plant in its full splendor, you are free to do so. It thrives in cool and damp locations, whether in Somerset West or Swellendam. Number 10. Butterwort. Were you aware that rubbing butterwort leaves on a cow's udders is believed to safeguard milk and butter from evil? Even if you're skeptical about this myth, 
researchers propose that the leaves of this plant can indeed be used to curdle and thicken milk. Yet, that isn't the sole purpose for their existence. The plant derives its name from its broad leaves, coated with butter. It is indigenous to North America, South America, Eurasia, and Central America. Instead of emitting a sweet smell to attract prey, butterworts entice insects that mistake the pearly secretions on their leaves for water. As these insects approach to quench their thirst, they become ensnared and are gradually dissolved by digestive enzymes. A clear sign that a butterwort has had a satisfying meal is the hollow insect exoskeleton left on its leaves after the insides have been drained. It tells the whole story. Common butterworts are typically found in damp areas like bogs, rock crevices, and wet heaths. They wouldn't have developed carnivorous tendencies if their environment hadn't compelled them to do so. Inhabiting low-nutrient habitats with inadequate food, they have no choice but to supplement their diet with insects. Number 9. Venus Flytrap What actions would you take if you found yourself confined within a building? Most likely, you'd express your distress by screaming, hoping that someone would hear you. A relatable response. Now consider the scenario of being ensnared within a plant. This might seem unexpected, but it does occur. The Venus flytrap stands out as the most well-known example of a carnivorous plant, thriving in the wild wetlands of the eastern United States. Notably, you won't find them in regular plant nurseries. They are too specialized for such settings. Carnivorous plants generally employ five methods, referred to as trapping mechanisms, to capture their prey. These mechanisms include snap traps, pitfall traps, flypaper traps, bladder traps, and lobster pot traps. Venus fly traps, classified as snap traps, function akin to mouse traps. Featuring hinged leaves, they snap shut when a prey animal makes contact with one of the sensitive hair-like projections on the inner surface of the leaf. The trapped prey finds itself confined behind the plant's spiny teeth and subsequently undergoes digestion facilitated by a red sap. This digestive process spans about 10 days, after which the leaves reopen, poised for the arrival of another victim. Number 8. Cobra Lily Despite its captivating appearance, the Cobra Lily proves to be a merciless carnivore, capable of devouring its victims within a matter of seconds. While categorized as a pitcher plant, it derives its name from its striking resemblance to the roaring head of a cobra, a potential source of confusion if one is not vigilant. This carnivorous plant features a forked leaf, enhancing its imagery, and it boasts a unique tongue or fang-like quality. Using nectar to entice unsuspecting insects, the cobra lily reveals another astounding trick. Translucent patches on the cap above the leaf tube create an illusion for the prey, making them believe it's a path back to safety. As the prey futilely attempts to escape, each struggle only intensifies the challenge. The more it fights, the more fatigued it becomes until eventual surrender. Unlike its predatory plant counterparts, the cobra lily generates bacteria instead of digestive enzymes. This bacteria breaks down the prey for absorption, and once the meal is complete, it patiently awaits the next opportunity. Number 7. Large Floating Bladderwort Smaller creatures in the sea face terror from sea monsters like orcas. But an even more ominous threat arises from certain plants that establish themselves in the ocean, inflicting harm on unsuspecting victims. I'm referring to plants such as bladderworts. These plants employ a completely different method for capturing their prey. Bladderworts are present in lakes, ponds, and streams, and they are easily recognizable due to the trigger hairs on their bladders. These hairs are activated when a potential prey item floats by. Upon the bladder opening, water rushes in, carrying the prey along with it. Although this process might appear intricate, it occurs in less than a second. Surprisingly, this plant is even quicker than the Venus flytrap. Native to the southeastern United States, it can grow up to two meters long. Its substantial size poses a threat to native insects and other plants, as it is invasive and can take over large bodies of water. Number 6. Gorgon's Dewstick While certain carnivorous plants might present a fierce and lethal appearance, the Gorgon's Dewstick stands apart from them. It maintains a composed demeanor until its prey ventures too close. Here's its modus operandi. It entices its prey with an air of innocence, cultivating enough trust to encourage them to approach. This slender leaf shrub, also recognized as the flycatcher bush, carries a deceptive facade. 
equipped with tentacles secreting a sticky resin to ensnare its prey. It deviates from the typical carnivorous approach by not consuming the insect directly. Instead, it patiently waits for a jumping tree bug named Pedia reedy to partake in the consumption of the captured prey. As a result, it earns the classification of a proto-carnivorous plant. Its engagement in this behavior isn't merely for amusement. As the bug devours the insect, the plant derives nutritional benefits from the droppings left behind by the bug. This cunning plant is indigenous to the western Cape province of South Africa. The Gorgon Dew Stick has the potential to reach heights of 60 to 100 centimeters, featuring a fairly stout brownish stem with horizontal leaf scars. Number 5. Yellow Pitcher Plant Introducing a plant that outshines its counterparts. It's arguably the tallest species of pitcher plant discovered in the southeastern United States. This plant boasts uncomplicated, nodding flowers and leaves transformed into hollow pitchers. Its method of insect capture is passive, enticing them with nectar and submerging them in fluids. The trapped insects find themselves in a zone that readily absorbs nutrients, sealing their fate upon reaching this stage. The yellow pitcher plant developed this behavior as an adaptation to nutrient-poor soil conditions. Thriving in wet or frequently flooded areas, these plants demand more nutrients to thrive. Distinguishing features of this plant include its upright, tall, and yellow-green veined pitchers, setting it apart from other pitcher plants. Large yellow, five-parted flowers grace it from April to May. An unpleasant cat like odor emanates from them, held on long stems above the pitchers to prevent the unintentional trapping of potential pollinators. Number 4. Purple Pitcher Plant The subsequent plant holds the distinction of being the most widely distributed pitcher plant globally. It stands as the sole member of its genus adapted to cold temperate climates and belongs to the carnivorous plant family, Saraciniaceae. Its presence spans the eastern seaboard of the U.S., the Great Lakes, and southeastern Canada. This species was introduced in various parts of Ireland and has since proliferated. Similar to other members of the Saracenia genus, the purple pitcher plant primarily derives nutrients through capturing prey. Regrettably, it exhibits inefficiency in prey acquisition. Less than 1% of the prey that visits are captured within the pitcher. Nonetheless, growers note that pitchers tend to rapidly fill up with prey during warm summer months. These captured prey fall into the pitcher, where they drown in rainwater that accumulates in the base of each leaf. Among the victims are spiders, ants, flies, and moths. Number 3. Drosera pulchella While Drosera pulchella may not attain the same stature as Raja or the pygmy sundew, here's the surprise. It's just as ferocious as its larger counterparts. Indigenous to southwestern Australia, this plant measures a mere 15 to 20 meters in width. Nevertheless, underestimating it would be a mistake. It entices prey by emitting a sweet-smelling secretion from its tentacle-like projections at the ends of its leaves. This aroma attracts inquisitive insects, and when they approach too closely, they find themselves ensnared as the plant's tentacles contract, enveloping them in mucilage. The unfortunate prey is then subjected to digestion after a few weeks. Typically thriving in areas abundant with moisture, such as lakes, forests, creeks, and swamps, this species stands out among sundews. It manages to endure the Australian dry season by developing extensive roots that secure water when it becomes scarce. Compensating for the low-quality soil they inhabit, these plants resort to catching insects. Drosera pulchella exhibits the capacity for both sexual and asexual reproduction, adapting to environmental conditions. Thanks to their diminutive size, they can be cultivated as indoor plants, flourishing in stable environments. Number 2. Corkscrew Plant Unlike its counterparts on this list, the corkscrew plant pays little attention to insects. So, what does it favor? Its preference lies in protozoans and other microscopic animals. It lures these creatures and consumes them with its specialized leaves that grow beneath the soil. These leaves are lengthy, pale, and reminiscent of roots. In the case of one species, Genius, its leaves have a conventional appearance and emerge above the ground for photosynthesis. Technically categorized as herbs, corkscrew plants inhabit semi-aquatic regions of Africa including Central and South America. The flowers of this plant are vibrant yellow or golden yellow, blooming throughout the year. Genius flowerscapes are sturdy, ranging from 10 to 30 centimeters in height. 
Each inflorescence showcases one to three open flowers at its apex, but has the potential to produce up to 11 flowers. The growth is rapid and occurs within a few months. The flowers are delightful, and once the blooming commences, it continues without interruption. The seeds necessitate ample light, including artificial light, for a duration of 10 to 12 hours.